Man, this four-man squad is so... cultured. Imagine Christopher Columbus, Hayred in Barbarossa, or even Operation Barbarossa, Enzo Ferrari, and Sandro Botticelli all walk into a bar. There's an Italian joke in here somewhere. I'm just not entirely sure what it is. I just don't know. How are you all doing, humans of the world? It's your boy, Major McDonald's, and you're watching the new series on my channel reviewing all the gold order weapons in Enlisted. And today, we're talking about the VMP 1926. As always in the series, this video will consider the weapon's history, its stats, comparing it to existing weapons, some gameplay, how fun it is to use in game, and my overall leaderboard ranking. All sections which you can quickly move to using the timestamps on the video timeline. But you guys know the score by now. Let's begin. The VMP 1926 is described in-game as an early predecessor of the German staple SMGs, the MP40 and MP38, designed by Heinrich Vollmer and tested in 1926, which are just the numbers in the weapon's official name, because, uh, I guess it just makes sense. But the VMP specifically stands for the... Oh, every time I do one of these reviews, I get stuck trying to pronounce these things. The Vollmer... Machinen pistol? Pistoli? No, oh, wait, that's from the Swami. Oh god. Which actually is just the surname of the fellow who designed it, and the second word, which I'm not going to try and pronounce again, means simply submachine gun. But those history buffs out there might be asking yourselves, 1926? What? Didn't the big boy Treaty of Versailles prevent the Germans from making machine guns? Well, they were such chads that they ignored this ruling, and its development, production and financing was taken in secret at Vollmer's small factory, and the Reichswehr were the party behind the money, allowing Heinrich to develop this SMG further after they saw his prototype of the VMP 1925, which was in fact very similar to this 1926 version. The Reichswehr, contrary to popular belief, was actually the name of the German armed forces during the Weimar Republic and the first few years of the Third Reich, before the ruling party named them to the Wehrmacht. So the Weimar government was a tad naughty, eh? They weren't all innocent, as all history would have you believe. Don't get me confused, that's not to say the National Socialists were better, probably should clarify that. Military trials of the illegal VMP SMG line were conducted in secret, and whilst the VMP was ultimately not adopted by the Reichswehr at any time, mostly because the Treaty of Chad Sai prevented adoption of any automatic weapons at the time, the 1930 VMP version was sold internationally to Mexico, Bolivia, for use in the Gran Chaco War between 1932 and 1935, but mostly to Bulgaria, the latter of which offers a basic explanation as to why it might be in the Moscow campaign in-game, as Bulgaria was involved in the Eastern Front, but they never actually declared war on the USSR, even though they cooperated with the Axis at the time, so... Uh, so I guess it's just a tentative explanation at best. But what else do we know of Heinrich Vollmer? He began his career by producing parts for MG08 machine guns, which was a German derivative of the Maxim gun used during World War One also known as the first ever true machine gun, which is also present in enlisted Stalingrad campaign, and also designed other full MGs such as the VMG 1927 and the very famous MG34, another common weapon in the game of enlisted. He designed a high capacity magazine 60 rounds for the MP18, which is similarly known as one of the first submachine guns in history. He then used a lot of the MP18's design alongside his own tweets to design his own SMGs like the VMP 1926, his own machine guns like the VMG 1927, and automatic assault rifles like the SG-29 and the M35, the latter of which led to the STG-44, also known as the MP43, which is present in enlisted Normandy and Berlin campaigns. But Former's most notable work was his design and major contribution to the improved and continued version of the VMP, the Irma EMP, and its many variants, also known as the MP34 or MP35, another gold weapon present in enlisted. I know, these weapon names are so confusing, trust me, I had to like learn this off by heart when I was doing this, it was incredibly confusing, but hopefully you follow me. It was called the Irma EMP instead of the VMP, as in October 1931, Heinrich Vollmer actually sold the rights to the VMP, because although the 1930 version achieved many international sales, the Reichswehr, or to be more specific, IWG, also known as, uh, Inspection für Waffen und Gerät, 
Why can German not be simpler to pronounce, really? Terminated its financial support to Fulmer. Not because of lack of progress or faith in the weapon that he was designing, but the most likely reason was the financial crisis that started on Black Friday on the New York Stock Exchange in 1929, which dramatically reduced the financial resources of the Reichswehr at the time. As a result, he halted development and sold the rights of the VMP line to Irma Werke. Or... Oh, not again. Erfurter Maschinenfabrik? Sometimes I honestly wish I had my own personal German I could refer to to pronounce these things for me in the videos. That would be so ideal. An existing larger German small arms manufacturer that operated from 1924 all the way up to 1997. And funnily enough, Irma had arisen from the ashes of a disbanded state armory, courtesy of the Chad Sai Treaty, who would evolve it into the MP38 and MP40. Jesus man, this fella has been around the block. I mean, look at all this extremely famous stuff he helped create and develop and this list doesn't even include what some of it went on to be. Post World War II he was recommended for an Order of Merit in 1959, which is currently the highest tribute the Federal Republic of Germany still today can pay to individuals for service to the nation. But he actually refused it. A humble man too then, well, can anyone just not like this dude? And not only this, but he also founded Machine Manufacturer, yes, Machine Manufacturer, not Machine Gun Manufacturer, you did hear that right, Volmer Werke, which admittedly began in his small factory which did produce some of the VMP SMGs in 1909, which still operates today in countries all over the world with branches in Germany, Austria, Great Britain, France, Italy, Poland, Spain, Sweden, the USA, Brazil, Japan, China, South Korea, India and Russia. Dang dude, talk about creating a legacy. This man can hardly have had a better one. Because Heinrich Vollmer's factory was indeed very small, there were only ever a few hundred made of the entire VMP line, with the precise number unknown. Although it is estimated that there are between circa 350 and 400 VMP 1930s produced, mostly for sale internationally as we mentioned earlier, with only a very limited number of 1926s, the ones we are actually analysing today. However, while almost all sources I look at confirm that the VMP 1926 in-game is accurate in almost all of its statistics and historical accuracy purposes, the aspect that is different is its magazine size. Most sources quote a 25 round detachable drum magazine with some quoting a 32 round detachable box magazine or a 30 round equivalent for the 1928 and 1930 versions, and most of the images I've shown you today include weapons with those magazine specifications, but the weapon in game has a whopping 40 rounds per magazine. Why is that? On the enlisted forums, user Olex17, who I think I know and if I'm right in saying he comments on many of my videos, so let me know if it is you, Oleg, sums it up perfectly and finds that the. Oh no, not again. Wehrtechnische Studiensammlung Koblenz Museum, which is the Bundeswehr's, the current name of the German armed forces, official arms collection, which actually does have one with 40 rounds. And the museum also incidentally houses other Gold Order weapons in the game, suggesting that the devs, Darkflow, really do like the look of this museum. <laughs> Nevertheless, there is literally no evidence out there that I can find explaining why a 40 round version exists, but it just does, and Darkflow liked it, which makes this weapon very powerful in game, and we'll come to that later. Just a side note on something that might be interesting to know, but the Soviet armed forces in 1927 actually tested and compared the VMP 1926 with the first ever Soviet submachine gun, the Tukarev Model 1927. This was because prior to the breakout of World War II, the Soviets actually had very very good contacts with Germany, including Fulmer himself, and German armed forces trained and tested regularly their armaments in the USSR. So it's interesting that the Soviets actually used this gun, or at least tested it. As always, I'll leave a link to all the sources I used in the description so you can investigate further for yourself, either about Heinrich Fulmer, the VMP line, Irma Werke, or literally anything else, because it's all so interconnected and fascinating to learn how one thing developed into another, and it's all just a really interesting read, I promise. I myself spent hours going down rabbit holes. Also next to that description is the subscribe button, so please click it for me and I promise doing so is as rewarding as actually reading up on the sources I just mentioned. Plus, it's a lot easier. Come on. To assess the VMP's raw power in game, we'll compare the SMG assault weapon to other similar weapons in Enlisted. We'll start with the other SMGs or assault weapons from the Tunisia Axis campaign, just one of the two Enlisted campaigns this weapon is available in. And remember, each gold weapon such as the VMP comes at 5 stars already, so we'll compare it against other 5 star or fully upgraded weapons. Beginning with the MP28, the first freely unlockable SMG in Tunisia for the Axis, we see that the VMP is just simply better. The VMP has a significantly 
higher fire rates with double the magazine size, which are the biggest differences, but also has one, yes, one better horizontal recoil for whatever reason. The reload speed and weight differences are unnoticeable, so you would definitely prefer the VMP. The second unlockable assault weapon in that campaign is actually the M30 Luftwaffe drilling shotgun. And to be honest, if you think that this triple barreled heap of uselessness is better than the VMP, then you need help. Skipping over that into the Beretta M1, the third unlockable assault weapon in that campaign, we see that the VMP has its first proper challenge. The VMP bests it in terms of fire rate and reload time with base hit power and magazine size being equal. The only real things the M1 has over the VMP is its lower weight, lower recoil and semi-automatic functionality, with the latter two going hand in hand. But the difference is not enough to put it above the VMP, so the Heinrich Volmer SMG can be classified as better. The fourth unlockable assault weapon in the Tunisia Axis campaign is the German World War II staple, the MP40. Once again, base damage being equal, the VMP has a higher fire rate but also has more ammo in a magazine, with 40 rounds compared to 32. Sure, the MP40 is lighter, has a better reload time and lower recoil, but these things are not as stark differences or as important as the fire rate and magazine size differences. Therefore, once again, the VMP is better, albeit not by a massive amount. The fifth unlockable assault weapon in the free campaign tree is the unique OVP M1918, and here we finally see an SMG which beats the VMP's fire rate, and by a lot. It's basically 1.5 times as quick to fire as the VMP, which is like PPSH levels of insanity. It also does a bit more base damage at 7.1 compared to the VMP 6.8, so it's actually a pretty dang good SMG in the two most important statistics. However, it is really let down by its very small magazine size of only 25 rounds, combined with its much slower reload time of 3.4 seconds. Therefore, I'd classify the VMP as better than it because you really don't need such an excessive rate of fire, especially combined with a tiny magazine size, which means literally you will spend more time reloading this thing than actually firing it, which, let's be honest, is not a great thing for an SMG. The sixth and last freely unlockable SMG in Tunisia Axis is the Beretta M38-42. Now, this really has a claim to fame. At max level, it would have the same 6.8 base hit power as the VMP. It would also have the same reload speed at 2.3 seconds, the same magazine size of 40 as well. Looking good so far, right? Even better is that it has better recoil, both vertically and horizontally, at 19 and 5 respectively, compared to the VMP's 22 and 7 respectively. All this being said, unfortunately, its rate of fire is slightly lower than the VMP, at 520 to 580 shots per minute, compared to the VMP's 630 to 690. So to decide which of the two is better, it's basically a trade-off between very slightly better recoil and slightly better rate of fire. In my opinion, I pick rate of fire as the best factor, as it's not an excessive increase in shots per minute. Therefore, the VMP is better, albeit not by a whole lot. Therefore, we can say that the VMP 1926 is better than all of the free SM Gs you can get in the Tunisia Axis campaign tree. But we're not finished. There is one premium squad with an assault weapon, the FNAB 43. The VMP beats the FNAB in fire rate most significantly, with base hit power and magazine size being the same. The FNAB also has a very slightly better reload speed and better recoil with a semi-automatic functionality, but the rate of fire difference is so stark that the VMP has to be considered better. In addition, with the release of the Stalingrad campaign and its accompanying updates, there were also new gold order weapons for all campaigns. If you're interested in watching a complete review of that campaign, then I have a video on my channel doing just that. In Tunisia, for the Axis, this meant that there was a new set of suppressed weapons as gold weapons, in which one of the weapons is a suppressed Irma EMP, which we have spoken a little bit already about in the history section. Here, the base damages and reload times are the same across both weapons. However, the VMP comes with a slightly higher rate of fire and larger magazine size, at the cost of slightly higher recoil than the Irma EMP with suppressor. So overall, the VMP is just better. But to be honest, the fact that the game is actually spelt suppressor wrong here should by default mean that the VMP is better. I mean, come on Dark Flow. Therefore, we can confidently say that the VMP 1926 is the best Tunisia Axis assault weapon, including all campaign unlocks, gold orders and premium squads. Therefore, spending your gold weapon order on this VMP in Tunisia makes a lot of sense. But this SMG is also available in another campaign in the game, the Moscow Axis campaign. So we have to do the same comparisons here to see whether the VMP is worth your gold order in that campaign as well. We'll do this one quicker than the last one as some of the same weapons are repeated across both campaigns. The MP28 
and the MP40 are also in this campaign, but we already said that the VMP was better than both of them. The MP38 is new, which is definitely worse than the VMP because of its lower fire rate and magazine size, despite the same base hit power, ever so slightly better reload speed, recoil and weight. The fourth assault weapon is the MP35-1, which is better base hit power at 7.2. That being said, it has a slower rate of fire, albeit not by much, a higher reload speed, a lower magazine size and about equal recoil. It's very doubtful that an extra 0.4 base hit power outweighs all the other losses the MP35 suffers against the VMP, therefore I would definitely prefer to use the VMP. Next is the Beretta M38, which actually looks like a much better weapon than the VMP, in the recoil and reload speed department especially, which would be 18 vertically and 5 horizontally, and 2.2 seconds, alongside the same base damage, 6.8, and the same fire rate, 630 to 690. However, as soon as you see the magazine size of only 20 rounds per magazine, you realise why the VMP is better. Then, lastly, we have the free Kirai 39M, the new SMG added to the Moscow Axis during the major Stalingrad update. It's a monster of a weapon, with better damage, fire rate and reload speed than the VMP, all with the same magazine size of 40 rounds. Its one big downside is that it does have much more recoil, which is definitely noticeable, and I'm not the biggest fan of its in-game feel as well, but none of this is really enough to say that the VMP is better, so I'd actually give the Karai first place, above the VMP. Once again, there are other gold weapons that are assault weapons that we can compare the VMP to, such as the Suomi KP-26 and the MKB-35-3. If you watched my gold weapon review, just like this one on the Suomi KP-26, which you can watch by clicking in the top right hand corner of the video on the white exclamation mark, and I'd recommend you do watch it because it's a dang good video if I say so myself, then you'd know we'd already compared the three directly, and you'd also know that the VMP loses to the Suomi KP-26 due to its ridiculously low recoil, yet the VMP beats the MKB-35-3 due to its much higher fire rate, better recoil, double the magazine size and better reload speed, even though the MKB's base damage is what actually makes it a really good weapon. I'm completely ignoring the Moscow Axis Beretta M1918 premium squad in the Moscow Axis campaign because it's just awful. If you've seen any of my other videos you'd know by now I think it's useless, so I won't even give it the pleasure of being considered. Therefore, we can conclude that the VMP is one of the best possible assault weapons in the entire Moscow Axis campaign, alongside being the best assault weapon in the Tunisia Axis campaign. But how good is the VMP compared to every single assault weapon in the game? Well, if you saw my top 20 assault weapons video, then you'd know what the best assault weapons are in the game, and the MP43-1 is currently the best. The Suomi lost in its comparison to it, so the VMP would as well, and it also lost to the PPSH-41. Therefore, once again, we can confirm the VMP is not the best assault weapon in the game, but it is definitely up there amongst the top few. In game though, I must say it's a weapon I'm really pleasantly surprised by when using it. It feels awesome to use, and its unique firing sound makes it stand out from anything else enemies or teammates alike are firing on the battlefield. In both the campaigns it's available in, it also stands out in terms of power, due to the bolt action nature of both of the two campaigns it's available in, and it's hard to get or even want better than it, and something about its history just makes it better. A history buff. Get it? Oh, okay, okay, you guys just don't appreciate my creativity, man.
If you want this gold weapon, you can only get it in the Moscow and Tunisia campaigns for the Axis faction. It costs one gold weapon order, or you can buy it for 750 enlisted gold, like you can for any other gold weapon that was part of previous battle passes, not the latest one. Note that you can actually obtain two VMP 1926s, one in each of the campaigns it's available in, on each account. However, if you are going to get only one, then I'd probably suggest you to get it in Tunisia, because the other assault weapons in Tunisia aren't as good as the ones you can get in Moscow, so it would be relatively more effective and deadlier in Tunisia than Moscow. But once again, that's just my personal opinion. And if you want it in Moscow, then of course, go for it. All that being said, I give the VMP 1926 a 7.5 out of 10. This is because it's a powerful weapon and is the most powerful SMG in one of the campaigns it's available at Tunisia Axis, and also up there with a the top few most powerful in the Moscow Axis campaign. It's also a very unique weapon in many ways, with a fantastic history too, which makes it even better and unique. However, it isn't as good as the Suomi which is also in the Moscow Axis campaign as an assault weapon, but also it struggles against one of the free SMGs you can unlock from just playing the game in the corresponding campaign, the Karai 39M. Therefore, it comes in at a few points below the Swomi, but gets a 0.5 extra on its score because it still is a very good weapon, and giving it a 7 alone would be doing it a disservice. If you guys want to watch other Gold Order weapon reviews to decide before you pick one to buy, then I have more of them on my channel, some of which are on the screen for you. On screen are also some of my premium squad reviews which you may also be deciding whether to spend your money on. Nevertheless, it's been a pleasure ranting at you today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.